I started out, piano was the first instrument I picked up uh, when I was really, really young, just kind of messing around, and then um, I took a couple of years of lessons, and, and that gave me a, a, a nice foundation, and then I got into guitar and trumpet and a bunch of other things, so that kind of broadened the horizons, but always kind of kept coming back to piano just because it's so complete and so versatile, and uh, it kind of just feels natural to play. That 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 uh, technology has made all the difference in the world for me. With that, like you know, trying trying to write out things by hand as I was learning how to, to read and write music was unbearable and, and very stifling. I think creatively for me, and I, you know, thinking back to to my favorite composers, I don't really know how they ever did that. How they ever could could be creative and also spend the time just marking and no, notating and doing everything that they did. Um, and so now, I, I mean, I, I know how to, to write and I know how to read music, but I very rarely do because a lot of it is, is through MIDI and, mm -hmm. you know, just using, you know, Sibelius or, or Pro Tools to, to just flip it into, into music for me. Um, so, so really, it's, it's so helpful in terms of arranging, orchestrating things. It's, you know, and if you mess up, you can just go in there and fix it. It's, it's, it's incredibly handy, and I, I don't know... You know, we would probably still be working on the first album if, if, I, if I had to write everything on my hand. Well, it's, it's been really important, especially on the last Fun album, because we, we, you hear sounds and you know, you know what the perfect sound is for a part, or the perfect, even the perfect, you know, piano patch, or the perfect synth noise that just has the right amount of atmosphere and, you know, the right amount of grit or fizziness to it or whatever. And it's hard to find those sounds. It's hard to know what you're looking for. And with, with the way that a lot of virtual instruments that, that I'm fortunate enough to work with, the way those work is, is you're very often able to kind of reconstruct the sound that's in your head or maybe combine things in the right way or start with a standard you know, stock instrument and, and you know, tweak some things and get exactly what you're looking for. It's a, it's a neat time because I remember hearing uh, Counting Crows I think the song is called Sleep in Perfect Blue Buildings, and there's this like... And now I could play that for an engineer, and we could figure out what, what they did, or we could make a very close approximation, cool. and then we could make it our own. Or, you know, we, you, can, you can do so many things with technology that I think you just kind of had to luck out on before. Yeah, well, the, the, the Muse, pat, the Muse <clears throat> library is incredible and has really changed our live show completely because everything else we were using was too thin or too muffled or too mid-range heavy, and you can only do so much with compression and with EQ, and it's... Uh, uh, Paul, our, our, our engineer, went, went through, we went through a list together and just started, you know, writing down the numbers of things that we liked, and... It was basically every other one. We had a list of like probably a hundred patches where like that that would work, that would also work. <laughs> and then so we were like, all right, well let's go through the ones we liked. They made it past the first cut. And I think it was the first one uh, on our second time through where we we're just like, do we really need to go through like that one's that one's perfect. Like let's just use that one. And we didn't even need to go through, you know, the second round because uh, it was so so good already. So that has really changed the live show. It's it's added a lot of beef to the piano and a lot of like character and complexity and, and expressiveness. Um, so it's been really good for us. I, I, I like to believe it's more empowering than that. I think any technology that exists today in the hands of the right people with the right attitudes is going to be helpful. I mean, GarageBand, I don't know if this is true or not, but it seems more powerful than, you know, what the Beatles had to make their, their albums, you know, and that's, that's something that comes standard on computers. And you could look at that and say, now anybody could do it, so it's going to dilute the, the creative pool, but in their hands of the right people, they're going to make really beautiful pieces of artwork with that, and they're going to use the new technology to expand what people thought of as, as possibilities in, in, in the 60s and 70s, but definitely like the 20s and 30s. And, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all about having the right attitude and the right mindset. And... In terms of learning the craft, I think I think you can still learn whatever craft you want to, and you can still devote the time into uh, writing things out by hand, and that's that that can be very valuable. If that's your process, then then more more power to you. It's not 
it's not mine usually, but um, there's certainly value in, in anything that helps somebody to be creative. Uh, it really varies. It can, it can be anything and it can happen at the wrong times or the right times or, you know, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to explain, I guess, the process. But all I can really say is that for me, nothing happens unless I'm working really hard at it. So I, mm. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, go like play tennis and then boom, like have a song in my head that I have to go get out. It's, it's, it's usually I have to sit at the piano for six hours and then at about hour seven, I might have an idea or I'll think back to it, you know, hour three and think like, oh, that was maybe worth pursuing. And then it's taking one little flash of an idea and working really hard to expand upon that, which I know isn't a romantic way to describe it. Um, it's not a, you know, a romantic notion of a composer or artist of any kind to just sit there and try to grind it out. But uh, I think that's the truth of how a lot of people work is it's a lot of hard work and you have to get up every day and work at it like, like any other job. Moments that are are really specific, but but universal. Because like like it's it's not enough to say something so so broad, or, or or maybe maybe it is. I don't know. There's no there there are no rules in, as as far as songwriting goes. But I do think that if you can say something, if you can express something universal in in a very tiny way, in a very, in a moment that is you know individually relevant to you, but could also maybe strike a chord with somebody else hearing it. Say that it takes way more work and is a way more convoluted path than you would expect. I mean, I'm, I'm 30 now, which I feel very young, and I know that is young, you know, by typical so standards. Says. But yeah, I think <laughs> I think a lot of kids get uh, maybe a little, a little disheartened at 20, 21, 22, 23, whatever, and maybe. Maybe it's for the best. Maybe I should have given up. <laughs> maybe I've, you know, spent a lot of time. Uh, spinning my wheels or whatever, but I'm, I'm certainly very happy now. I, w I would just say that if, if you want to be a musician, it just takes more work than you think. And even if even if you turn into someone like Justin Bieber, who becomes a megastar at a very young age, he's still working very hard. And uh, there's a lot probably that people don't see that goes into playing music for a living. It's, it's, uh, it's just a lot of work and a lot of time.